On the table today at Squirrel Stampede, we have the second series of the Super Mario Brothers movie action figures from Jack Pacific, like the Tanuki Suit Mario, one of my favorites. Also, Kamek is there, Peach is there, and so is a cat-suited Mario with extra fine detailing, a little bit larger scale, those creepy eyes, and a ton of articulation. Also appearing a surprise appearance of Bowser's Bridge, a place that we've got to get Landry across the bridge and take out Bowser into the lava pit. A really fun special set for the two-inch figure line. So lots of Mario gear to go through, lots to jump around with. Let's get right to it. Squirrel Stampede! So we have to begin with Tanuki Mario, as the squirrels are very much interested in this Japanese raccoon dog. Very, very cute. Not exactly a squirrel, as there is a flying squirrel suited Mario, but this certainly does look like a squirrel from certain angles. Tanuki Mario comes with the Tanuki converting leaf, and of course this very fancy the Super Mario Brothers movie packaging from Jack Specific. Love the packaging with these. Great posing of this Tanuki Mario here on the back of the box. I could essentially see him floating and flying throughout the air. We've got realistic eyes continuing with this series, premium details throughout, and 15 points of articulation. I swear the boxes make this series. They're so nicely done, so if you gently cut open the top with, say, a nice sharp knife, which I've got tape on, you should be able to open these up pretty easy without destruction. Love the Tanuki Mario call out on the inner tab. That is such a nice little highlight. Love the side artwork. You can place these all up in a row in a library and have these figures displayed nicely safe in their boxes. But we got to take them out. Of course, there's Tanuki out of pack. Possibly another display option in the shell here. You can have him floating about like he's actually flying. Kind of cool with the Tanuki suit. So we'll spin around and get out. And we're out. I guess you gotta get his arms up just like so to make it look like he's about to do a run and then maybe a fly off the screen. But again, with the super nice detail of these figures, you gotta admire all the texture work they place into this suit. Actually, almost feels like he is wearing a fuzzy raccoon dog suit. Very nicely done. Look at that tail stick out. It's so bright, almost beehive-esque. Points of articulation. There's one, two, three, four. Four, five, six, seven, eight on the body, nine, ten on the hips, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, and fifteen at the tail. I count fifteen. And they're going to be a little bit uh, tight and puffy because of his body style. They're not going to be bending completely where you want, maybe, but you know, actually doing pretty well. A little bit tight here at first on those elbows and shoulders. So there's plenty of movement here for this Mario to move about and display on your shelf. A quick callback to original Tanuki Suit Mario from Jack Specific here, a little bit smaller. Obviously, you can tell the scale of this deluxe series. It's a little bit taller. What is the scale of this, by the way? Already forgetting the height, this Tanuki Mario stands about five and a half inches tall with those ears, whereas the previous Jack Specific figures, I believe, were a four inch line. So a five inch line versus a four inch line. I think the only thing missing that would have been kind of fun with this set would be a Tanuki statue. We do not have one. We've got the leaf, but we do not have something to convert him into a statue, but that would be like almost a full other figure. But how cool would it have been to have him be able to like stand like this and then sandwich in over like a shell or something and you'd be like, eh, where'd Tanuki go? I can't find him. He disappeared. Wait a second. Wait a second. It looks like Landry's going to make a run. He's going to make up. Uh, no, no run yet. He's still trying to figure out how he wants to go through that. So while Landry works on his timing, let's check out Peach next. She's up next and place in Kamek in the bullpen. This is our second Peach release of the Super Mario Brothers movie series. This time in her cycle cart suit with a flying blue spiked shell. Pretty cool accessory on that one. Again with the side art and over on the back here we've got 16 points of articulation and premium details continuing with the series. Do we have premium eyes with her? No, her eyes are painted in. So let's carefully cut from pack, which I'm not doing very well. Careful. There we go. Looking pretty good in the suit, probably a little easier to work with instead of the full dress. And Peach, out of the pack, but a little bit trying on the standing. She's very wobbly, very wobbly. Oh, no. Top heavy head, ah. very small, weird footprint. Ah. Maybe it's her feet. Look how her feet are like angling out really oddly. 
Can you see that on camera? See how they're not really flat? They're kind of angled out. That's going to be a challenge to get her to stand correctly. They didn't place the feet and legs on the wrong side, did they? Well, there is some articulation in there and maybe that will soften a little bit and that's possibly why they're bent so much. I can slowly kind of adjust them back in. Maybe I can just give her some sort of cool stance. I don't know, maybe that'll help. Uh, like that, right? Well, anyhow, she's kind of tricky to play with. Big giant head, hair on the back, not much articulation because the hair on the back there. Non-removable helmet. It would have been really fun had they been able to figure out a removable helmet. Probably would have been two times as large though if they did. Shoulder rotation movement, elbows, wrists, torso, hips, thighs, knees, and ankles. So there's plenty of points on her. She's just a little bit tricky. I wonder if they designed her to actually sit on a bike. Maybe there'll be a uh, bike version of her at some point and they'll just sell with the same figure. That's a possibility right there that they created this figure to sit on a bike, an upcoming bike set. I don't know. But she stands a little funny. Ah, oh, oh, ah, I got her. But she usually doesn't hold in for too long. Looking up close to the face there, hidden by the visor, fairly good. She's got kind of an absent-minded stare, but all right. It's an okay figure. I think Tanuki turned out better. Oh, oh Landry is making his move, move. Oh, no, stopped midair, returned. I'm just gonna place this peach off to the side. I know she's gonna fall over. I'm going to have to find her a special holder, something to keep her from falling over. Kamek is next. We'll place Cat Mario into the bullpen. These four new figures appearing late summer, fall 2020. Squee. Kamek, a good choice for a second line of figures. Kinda interesting, they did two Mario suits and a princess. There may have been a few other movie characters I would have liked to have seen first, but Kamek is pretty cool looking and his box looking turtleific. Premium detail, seven points of articulation, not as many, but I think will turn out pretty fun. Let's see out a pack. Floating as well. And out a pack. So Kamek here out of pack, not exactly sporting the premium details that they're trying to say with these figures. There's a little bit of texture on that cape I see. It's just soft and hard to see. But there's not much here. Like they could have maybe gone into the glasses and given them some magnification. Something different. He's a very light figure. No, no foot movement. Kind of a shell of a toy. Oh, you know what? We forgot to check out the blue shell. The blue flying shell that came with Peach. It is a solid chunk of turtle shell. It's really heavy. In fact, it's almost heavier. It is heavier than Kamek. I think this weighs more than Kamek. This has more mass than Kamek does. And we've got these big, big giant heavy wings on there. Pretty fun accessory piece there. But Kamek is pretty basic himself. Does sport the accessory wand here. Kind of hard to move his arms out, so articulation. Head rotation, and you got 360 on that. Shoulders are just on rotation points with a little bit of hinging. I'm not getting much on those. And eh, maybe if I work at it a little bit. Not much there. Elbows and wrists. And again, feet are stuck into that giant, giant robe he's wearing. Definitely a lacking figure. Looks maybe good displayed in box, but I think I would kind of pass on Kamek. And we've seen Kamek before, haven't we? Yes, yes we have with the general release of Jack Specifics figures, and you can see there, there's kind of a really basic one, a little more detail there, yeah, they do boast a little more detail, a little larger scale, but really not too much. You see a lot more detail and fun with, say, the Tanuki suit Mario than you do with Kamek, so it's up to you and what you, what you want to do with this one. If you're collecting the full series, I would probably pick up, but if you're just collecting a few, I would probably avoid. Wait, wait, Landry's going in for a fast run. No, no, he chickened out, went back to the starting point. Really doesn't know how to get over that bridge yet. That brings about our last figure here. We've got Cat Mario. Really interesting, they went with both a Tanuki suit and a Cat Mario. We do, of course, see both in the movie. I know we see Cat Mario. I'm, I'm forgetting already if I saw Tanuki. I thought we did, right? Definitely Cat Mario on the Donkey Kong Bridge. And a really fun toy piece to produce. Cat Mario here, great side art. And look at the jump on the back there, that's a really cute jump. Or should I say Cat Pounce, a good pounce. Realistic eyes, again with Mario. Premium details and 15 points of articulation. That tail always gives you that extra point, doesn't it? So it's good to see Cat Mario to round out the series. I had actually already snuck Mario out of pack to play with. And 
Now I can just open again. I love the boxes. Did I say anything about how awesome the boxes were? Probably said that a dozen times. And the cats, out of the box. These big fuzzy suited character figures are so interesting. They're so puffy in a way. Sometimes a little difficult to stand because there's so much puff on those feet. But they certainly do well. The higher texture looks really fun. You can see all the fur kind of shimmering in the light on the character. A little extra paintwork of some orange stripes. And overall, just a fun, fun, playable figure. Both of these turned out so well. Realistic eyes, of course. And the 15 points, we've got the head, shoulders, elbows, wrists. Oh man, these, these hands are enormous. Look how big these paws turned out to be. I think Tanuki Suit Mario has just regular hands, regular Mario hands of such, but these are giant paws. These are a lot of fun. That is a nice characteristic of a cat Mario there. And then the rest of the puffy suit there, more articulation on the arms, shoulders, and elbows, wrists, and then torso rotation, pretty good right down the center. Uh, hips, a little tricky, a little tight there, a little tight on the knees still. No rotation on the knees. Kind of a kick out on the hips and then a little bit of a foot a foot rotation up and down hinge and then the tail on the back i believe that's a ball joint it's really tight i hope i don't um uncrack a tail like i did to that koopa years ago <coughs> and a quick character suit comparison with our cat suited mario from jack specific Back to the three inch scale there, not as much detail, but still a really fun figure. I like the three inch scale, always fun to play around with. So you can see higher, higher crazy detail, larger size, uh, but a little more comical with the regular release. Add Cat Mario came with this giant question block mystery box figure piece. Nothing really other than a huge chunk of plastic. <laughs> So is Landry finally gonna brave Bowser's Lava Bridge? Okay Landry, let's see if you can get across the bridge now. This is your opportunity. All right, he's making his move across. Going over, Bowser. Oh, he's going with the scooch over routine. Scooching, scooching Bowser and Tiny Chipmunk Squirrel over. Now onto the ax. And he's got him. Good job, Landry. So this is a really hot set. I just ran into the Deluxe Bowser Battle playset from Jax, recreating the iconic bridge scene with a squirrel. Well, sadly and strangely, unfortunately, it only comes with the Bowser minifigure. This is the two inch scale, the smaller scale. So you have to supply your own Mario two inch figure. Really dislike how cheap Jax can be in this situation. Just put Mario in the set, please. And unfortunately, many of the two inch figures are in weird, awkward positions sometimes too. We'll just go with that. It's an incredibly awesome display piece though. Almost looks like a little mini piano with the bridge tiles. Great Bowser backdrop. Bowser there defending his castle, making sure no one gets by. And then we have some light up effects. We've got a lava board and some lights that flicker in and out on the bottom. It's a total impressive display. You could place a ton of figures across the bridge if you're careful because the bridge can collapse. So to get the bridge to function, I'm still trying to figure out the exact mechanisms to it. It can be a little bit touchy. We have of course the trigger axe that is typically what Mario uses to knock down this bridge. Let's give it a try. I don't believe the axe really is involved. It clicks down. And I believe maybe if I click one more time, it may release the trigger. Eh, not exactly. The real trigger button lies in this exclamation button. If you press that down, you should hear a large roar and the bridge will collapse. Notice how the button works the ax as an action feature, but you can move the ax independently if you want it down for display, I suppose. There's also a hidden button on the side here for more sound effects. And those are fun to add in. To rebuild the bridge, I believe it's in sequence. You've got to kind of start on one side and lift the rest up. And sometimes they'll accidentally trigger themselves and fall back down. There are one, two, three, four, five steps to the collapsing bridge. And then of course you place back Bowser there. 
I guess the instructions are saying you can also play with this by pressing this down and then moving this manually. I don't know, the trigger is weird. I just go with this button. It seems to be the easiest approach. It's so much fun though, so much fun. And again, these little flickering light board details in the lava on the bottom is a nice extra touch. Let's go one more time. So what's up next for Squirrel Stampede? We've got Sonic incoming very soon, Sonic Prime. So I'm hunting those down. Smashers, huge Smashers Rex, Dino Island Rex head battles, Bakugan is rebooted, Minecraft Treasure X, only the top games by Dev Series. Are we not supposed to say Roblox? I see Mega Pokemon has the Paldea region team. A Kato may be back there beast strike? What? So lots of things incoming. Stay tuned to Squirrel Stampede. And did you know we have merch? What? Merch has finally dropped. We've got a few basic t-shirts going, a strange liquid holder, and who's brave enough to be one of the 500 to obtain the plush Flandry? So there we go with the second series of Mario stuff from Jack Specific Super Mario Brothers movie. What do you think? If you like today's video, please give us a squeak, squirrel live, squam at your favorite. Thank you so much for watching. That's what I have to say about that. <laughs>